to order at 8, 12 p.m. Note that no votes were taken in the executive session and I entertain a motion and the minutes be sealed. Mr. President, I'll make a motion to, uh, just want to clarify something. That we're coming out of the executive session for two items, potential litigation of Iron Mine Hill Road Tax Stabilization Agreement. Green development and two potential litigation municipal building review task force. So I just wanted to meet both of them, and, and uh, so I, I will make that motion. Then take off the second motion by Mrs. Zelensky, seconded by Mrs. O'Hara. Any discussion? Hearing none, no vote. Yes. 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 Now we go back. Next item is the open farm pursuant to public law 42 46 6 d with a maximum of 15 minutes. Um, we do have a list, and I just kind of remind everybody to please try to be concise as other people may want to speak. The first name on the list is Mr. Burke. I'm the only person on the list. The other people left. It. Oh, they left. Who is this? Um, I, I just, I have a, Mike Clifford, 489 Black Plank Road. I'm a little puzzled by the item on the agenda for the, for the uh, under new business seven, discussion by council voter on on I-9 Road Green Development Tax Stabilization Agreement. I don't understand how you'd be acting on that tonight for authorization for a signature. You're calling it a tax stabilization agreement and you have an ordinance dealing with tax stabilization agreements. And that ordinance calls for a public hearing on the tax stabilization agreement. So you're not even, you know, I asked for a copy of what they were requesting, and I was denied that under the APRA law that the document wasn't considered a public document at that time. But I don't know how we were even supposed to comment on it. Where it was, to me, we're supposed to have a public hearing on it if that's what you're going to, if that's what they're looking for is a tax stabilization agreement. I would think it was, you know, a tax agreement or tax treaty, but a tax stabilization agreement falls under the ordinance. So. Is there going to be a public hearing on it before you take any action on it? There will be. Okay. And so, I feel better about that. Thank you. Um, when will we be able to get access to the agreement that they're requesting? Right. We're going to discuss it tonight, but it's not going to be important. Okay. I know that we have that. What? I know that we have that public hearing on this. Okay. Ten days notice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know why it wasn't on before this was. But anyway. Okay. Um, secondly, I did send an email this morning about the budget committee's agenda for tomorrow night's meeting. I was very disappointed to see what they described as what they're being charged by the council with looking at. Um, I hope you all took the time to open the agenda and look at it yourselves because it didn't sound to me like it was going to be much more than a roundtable discussion with different groups in town to feel to get a sense of how they feel about the tax rates. And I, I thought the council or some of the council members were on board with the idea of actually doing an analytical study of, you know, okay, if we do drop the rates by a dollar on the commercial, what's the impact going to be on the residential? How much incrementally will the, will the residents have to continue to bear an increase of? And uh, I thought there was going to be a little bit of studying to see the other communities in the state. Did they uh, actually, the ones who do have even dollar amounts for commercial and tangible and residential, do they have any commercial base in the town? Did it, did it bring in new industry in town when they did take that move? I thought there was going to be extensive analysis of all that stuff. The, one of the things I remember speaking about was the projected state aid and the impact on the decline in enrollment. We're going to get hit with that, with the state aid being continuously declined when the reval kicks in on top of the the um, declining enrollment. So, you know, you, is there going to be a forecast of how much more we're going to have to contribute to the schools if we do this? Because it just seems to me we're going to be picking up an awful big burden off of the commercial and tangible properties for no reason whatsoever. Because I don't think there's much land to be developed. And that was the other part. How much land is there to be developed? Could they identify it and show it to us? And, you know, is it already currently zoned? And what's the time frame we're looking at here? But I definitely felt that it was going to be more than a round table discussion. So disappointing to see that. Um, with regard to the MBRTF update on the agenda, uh, when that when this committee, current MBRTF committee took over, 
and you were authorized to go forward with the Kendall Dean project in that same motion, I think there was reference to also going forward and authorized you to go forward with the Kendall Dean renovations. But I think there was a second part to that uh, motion that dealt with uh, pursuing the public police station and refining the bid scopes to see what could be done with the remainder of the money and what you would be able to do with that building. And I've never heard anything of that mentioned when you've given the updates on the MBRDF. So, you know, where is that and when is that going to happen? And I would, I, I would hope they can start to address it under the, uh, under, uh, when you provide the updates. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on the open forum? Hearing none, um, this time I would ask the council to in, indulge me and move up for immediate consideration. Item number
discussion by Council Member Miller Action on change order from the Big Building Company to replace high school science lab windows. That's got Mr. Rizowski in authorization of signature. The best, um, Bob Gervasini, who is our OEM on the job, to address this with us. And I believe someone is here from Gil Bain as well as on staff and some people in the school department that are overseas. Hi, I'm Robert Gervasini with STD Inc. I'm the uh, town of North Smithfield uh, owner's project representative overseeing the uh, construction at both the elementary school and the high school. And I have a change order that is being uh, recommended for approval for the addition of 12 new windows, replacement windows to the uh, existing windows where the new uh, science labs will be built. Uh, the, there are two windows in the scope of work now. They're considered uh, escape windows. They're part of the original project. And after we did the demolition and the abatement of the space itself, it became clear that the, the other 12 windows associated with that space were not in very good shape. It made sense to change those. Uh, funding for this is, is part of the budget, so it's not going to uh, result in an overrun to the project. I've, I've reviewed the details, uh, discussed it with Gilbane, uh, and uh, we discussed it at the last project meeting, and we're putting it forward as a recommendation. So they're, they're taking out the single pane hopper windows that yeah. right. It's going to be energy efficient window up Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the latest state of the art. So it could be the start of a window program potentially yes. in that, on that building. Yes. This would be the first. These would be the, uh, the window you would probably use if, if, in the short term, you decided to uh, fix or change more windows. Yes. Well, it's really just minor on my part, Mr. President. If I'm looking at the July 2nd memo from Asbestos Abatement Company, maybe someone can explain this to me. Under the heading of Equipment Sawzall, they're using a, uh, a brand name, which is for reciprocating, so I believe. Grinders and blades, seven hundred fifty dollars. Did someone tell me every time, like someone does a project, do, is the new saws all bought for that project? I know it's only seven hundred fifty dollars with blades, and I'm is, saying, is it for the saws or the self or the blades? Because the, the, the blades are consumed. Yeah, but the saws are itself is still pretty functional, I would imagine, right? Yeah. For previous jobs. Yeah, they can be reused. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's just buying new sawzall. Yeah, equipment sawzall. Again, that's a that's a branding. It's you know it's not a Bausch. It's not the Walt. They're using the name sawzall for I believe it to be a reciprocating blade. A reciprocating sawzall. Sawzall. Why why would why would we have to incur a cost for a uh, a saw of any nature? Well, not necessarily the saw itself, the, uh, the blades. May I show Because it does list sawzall and it says. So it's all grinders and blades, seven hundred fifty dollars. We could get clarification for you on that. Yeah, it's little things like that that, yeah. that comes to my attention. Probably did picture, but I just like to look at. I'm probably missing the big things, but if you could get me that answer. That'd be great through the okay. through the administrator. We'll do that. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a, is there a motion to approve the change order? for the North Smithfield Science Lab renovation in the amount of $79,889. A motion approved. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Wensk. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Avioli. Any other discussion? No, my name is the President. Just one. Uh, indicate my uh, encouragement uh, for this uh, for two reasons. One, um, the extent of work that's being done on the inside of the, these rooms is not something that we want to do again. Um, and placing these windows now avoids that circumstance in the long term. And as you pointed out, and I think equally importantly, we are pretty much looking at what could be a pilot for an understanding of the complications and um, the potential success of how we go about replacing the windows all around this, this building. 
Um, so I think it was a recommendation from um, uh, Mr. CP in uh, the uh, analysis of this project that we should a whole lot of them appraise. Thank you. Any other discussion? Terry Dunn, roll call vote. Bob Mulvey? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go back to the original agenda. North Smithfield Town Council. The city has the Board of License Commissioners with a victory license. The Brianna Brownell. Uh, to authorize the uh, public minister to sign that contract. Make a motion to you. I'll make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign that. Motion by Mrs. Zelensky. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. O'Hara. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We do item C. We do item 7C. Mr. Bassini is here on behalf of the developer. If I may ask, Mr. President, is the applicant here for the picture waiting license? Alright, no problem. Done. Right. So we want to move up item on the on the new business item C. Seven C if you could and also the okay. Discussion by council about our action on I and Mind the Road Pain Development Tax Stabilization Agreement. Mr. President, I'm just going to give a quick introduction. I have something to give mm -hmm. council. As you know, uh, Mr. President, pursuant to uh, the ordinances adopted by the council, uh, specifically um, Section 5.7.11, development incentive to the town, the developer is responsible when they, when they provide an open, in this particular case, Green's overlay, to provide a, an incentive package to you for your approval. On April 30th, 2019, I received a letter from Mr. Mancini, who represented the developer to propose a uh, tax stabilization agreement. Um, when I received that, I did some homework based upon the president's direction, the administrator's direction, and um, I had several conversations and emails with Mr. Brissini, and as a result of that, he generated um, a mocked up version of that. He's got a, he actually has that mocked up version today in red, which I think would be helpful to the council ultimately um, when it becomes public to the public. So you know where exactly you are. May I hand that out? Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just this is just a draft that should be mocked. There's a draft on it. It's mocked up. It's, uh, it represents the work that I did in conjunction with Mr. Rossini, your direction, the administrative direction, and my work with the Office of Energy Resources. And now it's before the council uh, for discussion. And obviously, as uh, was pointed out earlier by yourself, Mr. President, any agreement needs to be posted for 10 days in a, a newspaper of uh, general circulation and a public hearing needs to be had before it could be ever be approved. This is, we're not at that stage yet. I'm going to have some questions for him. I'm sure everybody else would too. Good evening, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen on the council. My name is Stephen Brusino, B-R-U-S-I-N-I. -I. I'm an attorney in Providence, and I represent Green Development. Happy to answer any questions regarding the tax stabilization agreement. Um, as Mr. Igliozzi indicated, just, I'm not sure who did the original draft, but it was presented to me a few months ago to adopt some uh, conceptual changes or mostly clarifications that Mr. Igliozzi had and perhaps were reflected from questions the council had. That's the red line you have before you. I do know there was a question from the public. If it would help, I'm happy to give a very brief uh, explanation of what this, this is a unique type of tax stabilization agreement. A typical tax stabilization agreement is a developer taxpayer coming to the town and for their own benefit seeking a stabilization of taxes for a particular period of time. This is something different with respect to renewable energy projects. The uh, General Assembly and the Office of Energy Resources published regulations which indicate how much a town can charge for tangible taxes so that it's uniform across the state. Um, if that's all there was, there would be no need for a tax stabilization agreement. What the statute allows is in the situations, as Mr. Igliozzi indicated, where a developer is offering more incentive to a town, the only way that can be binding is through a tax stabilization agreement. 
So unlike a typical tax stabilization agreement that's for the benefit of the developer, this is a tax stabilization agreement that's for the benefit of the town. It's the developer giving the town more, and this is the document that binds it. The uh, changes that I worked on with Mr. Elielsi were just clarifications to make sure that it was consistent with the town's authority under its own ordinances and under their, actually is a statute that the town has, which is a little different in terms of the time period or the length of contract that uh, can be allowed and we were trying to accommodate those changes. But I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, I have a few. Just for a little housekeeping on my I just want to know what company we're dealing with. April 30th, we were dealing with Green Development. Uh, then it switched over to Project Limited Liability Company. And as of today, Mr. Porcini, I'm sorry, I didn't print this out at home because I was busy. But we received this today, and now I see it's uh, GDIM1 and it, uh, Limited Liability, LLC. And it lists GDIM1 through GDIM9. So there are nine separate limited liability, uh, is that correct? Correct, so what, if I might, what typically happens with a renewable project is there is a developer, green development in this case, that will work on the project for a period of time to make sure that it sort of has legs, that permitting is possible, that the project can be built. Once that point is passed, then all renewable energy projects, regardless of who the developer are, are owned by a special purpose entity. No different than somebody building a building on a piece of real estate, they'll create an entity that's just going to own that piece of real estate. So GDIM 1 through 9 are the nine companies that are going to own the nine projects that comprise this entire renewable energy project. And the reason that there are nine instead of one is there are certain limitations on size of project in order to be eligible for the Renewable Energy Growth Program, which is the program that uh, this, the General Assembly mandates uh, National Grid to buy energy from the developer. So they were designed as nine separate projects to be able to accommodate that. All of the parties are on that one agreement, so the town didn't have to have a concern that they were dealing with this one, but not that one. It's the entire project that's uh, providing the tax stabilization of the 